It's very sacred. I, I have preached for uh, many years. And, uh, but you know, as I waited on the Lord for this message, it doesn't matter if I preached to thousands or it doesn't matter, it's still the same. You must wait before God and pray and hear from God. And I'm asking God that the message that I have here today will be for each of us here. It's directed for us, not for people who aren't here, it's for the people who are here. And then I'm going to video this as well because I think there may be someone who is watching by this video and they need this same word from God. Just review, last Sunday we talked about what happened between where Jesus said it is finished and then it was announced he is risen we looked at seven things, that the temple was torn, that the earthquake, the rock split, and uh, that he descended into the lower regions, he disarmed Satan, <laughs> hallelujah, and all the authorities, uh, he preached to the spirits that were in Noah's day, he took the keys of death and hell, and it's going to be part of our message today too, if they tie it together, he took the keys of death and hell, when he destroyed hell, when he made a shame of Satan, uh, he destroyed it and took the keys. And Satan had no idea what was going to happen, or they would, the Bible says they would have never crucified Christ. Mm -hmm. And they know it, but Satan is not a mission. He doesn't know what's going to happen next. He likes to make that kind of illusion, mm -hmm. fortune telling and everything. If you believe a spirit, the spirit takes power, and a false spirit. But I can tell you this, Satan does not know the future. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Jesus then led captivity captive. And remember, I just think of Abraham and Sarah and David and Solomon walking around in Jerusalem until Jesus rose again. What an amazing account. This is the word of God. Well, now we're going to go to, it was announced he has risen. And Hallelujah. what happened? Like, right after he's risen. What happened? We know he's risen, and we looked at what happened between his crucifixion and his resurrection. But over these next weeks, okay, I want to look at what happened from when he is risen, okay, until when he ascended. First of all, he appeared to Mary. Then he ascended to heaven. Now, just wait, that's not the ascension. I'm going to talk about that later. But he appeared to Mary and ascended to heaven. He presented the atoning blood and he sat at the Father's right hand. That's what we're going to look at today. But then he appeared to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Then he appeared to all the disciples and then Thomas and then to 500 at one time. Okay, so we're going to look at that in the next weeks. There was a miraculous catch of fish by the sea. We're going to look at that in the weeks to come, okay? And then he ascended into heaven uh, before all those were watching him. So we've got a lot to cover, and I want to kind of do this over the weeks there is between now and Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So in these 50 days between Easter and Pentecost, I'd like to take these weeks when I'm with you, and let's look at the scriptures to say, what happened between the resurrection and the ascension of Christ? Today we're going to look at him appearing to Mary and ascending to heaven, and it's very definitive. This is not maybe. Let's look carefully at the scriptures this morning. John chapter 20, verse 11 to 17. And I want you to feel this with me. It's early in the morning, dawn. There's been the earthquake. The soldiers have all fallen backward. This is what we're going to look at in a little bit next week, but it's been chaos. The stone is rolled away, and Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. Now she was weeping. Why? She loved Christ. But in her mind, she saw that he'd been crucified, and she knew he was buried, and knew they'd never put any spices on his body. And they went, she, went, she was like, that's disgusting. They made no preparation. They just took him from the cross and they put him in the tomb. And I love him. And I'm taking special, very expensive spices to put on his body so there will be no stench. She's anticipating after the Sabbath death and coming to the corpse. 
of Jesus Christ. That's why she's weeping. It's right, folks, to grieve. We've all lost someone close to us. I remember being at my mother's grave and my father's grave, and there's tears. You're going to miss them. They're gone. This is Mary. She's weeping in the tomb. And she wept, but she stooped and looked at the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain. Mm -hmm. One at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? <laughs> Can you imagine how that hit her? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine going to a funeral and saying, Hey, why are you crying? She's weeping, and she said to them, They've taken away my Lord. Not only he was crucified, not only they buried him, but they've taken his body away. Can you imagine how desecrated that would feel? Mm -hmm. You come to someone's burial and someone's taken the body? Can you imagine what Mary is thinking right then? This is worse than my worst nightmare. They've taken his body. And I don't know where they've taken him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she didn't know it was Jesus. I could see there's tears streaming down her face. There's a gardener there, and she's going, I can't believe it. Why? How could they so desecrate my Lord's body? And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And once again, supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Can you feel what Mary's feeling? Can you feel the agony? Tell me where you've taken him, and I'll get him, and I'll give him a proper burial. In that moment, Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary. My sheep know my voice. There's only one who says her name like that. Have you ever heard Master, call your name. Mary. She turned and said to him in Arabic, Rabboni. I can just, can you hear this? Like, she's just like, she goes from total devastation to, huh? And what does she want to do? She reaches up her and he says to her, touch me not. Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. Do you get it? He, the earth had quaked. He had come from the lower regions, defeating him. He comes to the surface of the earth, but that's as far as he got when he met Mary. She is about to grab him and never let him go. <laughs> and he says, don't touch me. We're going to look at why. Why did he say, don't touch me? He says, because I have not yet ascended to my father. Go tell my brethren and say to them, I am ascended to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Well, now I'm inviting you to come into heaven with me. And folks, I didn't have a vision. I didn't die and come back to tell you something. This is the holy word of God that we read this morning in Hebrews chapter 1. And I'm going to start in at verse 3. The Son, that's Jesus Christ, is the radiance of God's glory. Get this and the exact representation of his being. 
There is no artist in the world who's ever made a painting of Jesus that looks like Jesus. I'm telling you. Rembrandt, it doesn't matter. Leonardo da Vinci, no one has ever captured the countenance of God. They've only made paintings of a human form. But Jesus can never be portrayed in a picture or a painting because he's not just human. Amen. He is God. Yes. He is the exact representation of his being. And he sustains all things how? By his muscles? No. no. By his word. His word. He spoke. Yes. And everything came into existence. By his word, we all are sustained. Every one of you are sitting here because God is giving you breath. Mm -hmm. Amen. You're not breathing because your brain is saying breathe. God is saying breathe. God, your heart is beating. You're, you're breathing because God is sustaining you by his word. Yeah. Yeah. That's what keeps us alive. I'm going to keep going. It says, after he had provided purification for sins. Can I just stop there for a moment? We can read through this, but we must pause. We have to meditate on scripture. What does this mean? After he had provided purification for sins. Mary, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Why? Because he had to present the purification for yeah. sins. And what cleanses us? The blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, blood what did Jesus yeah. present before the throne of God? He presented his blood. Mm -hmm. The Lamb of God that was slain from before the foundation of the world. Okay? The lambs that were slain in the Old Testament, they were only pictures of Christ. They were just imitations this is the real sacrifice, the one sacrifice. Now listen, God is just. If someone steals a dollar from a store, what do they have to pay back? They have to pay back a dollar to the store, right? If you steal something, you have to give back the value of what was stolen. Yeah. Well listen, in our sins, the price for our sin has to equal the penalty. Now listen, this is, I hope, this is last night when I was praying, I got this and I was like, wow. If you took a, a balancing scales, when I used to work on my grandparents' farm, we had a market, and we would have a scale, and we would put these little weights on the one side and put tomatoes on the other side. If you buy a pound of tomatoes, I'd put a pound weight on the one side, and I'd keep putting tomatoes on the other side until it balanced. Then I could say, here's a pound of tomatoes, or whatever else it was. Well, this is what I saw last night. This so blesses me. There is my sins, all my lies, all my evil thoughts, all that. Folks, I'm over 40, and I've sinned every day of my life. I'm over 60. <laughs> I'm still telling the truth. I am over 40, and I am over 60. <laughs> the sins of one individual, each one of you, even though some of you look like saints to me and I know you're blessed, you know in your own heart, we sin against God. Even we all do. There's seven billion of us running around on the earth. There's people killing one another. There's people committing adultery. There's fornication. There's sexual sins. There's all kinds of moral sins. There's just in one day. The innocence, here it is, the innocence of Christ outweighs the guilt of all the sins of all the human race in all time. I want to tell you that I get excited when I saw that. I want, the innocence of Jesus overweighs all the guilt of all the sins of all humanity in all time. Thank you, Lord. Whoa! Whoa! I get excited. That so amazed me. When he provided the purification for sins, folks, heaven stood still. God was presenting to God his innocence. 
all of our sins were placed upon him. It was our sins that nailed Christ to the cross. Every human being contributed to putting the nails in Christ. Every human being nailed Jesus to the cross. Every one of us. Let's not point figures at political authorities and say, oh, wicked men. Wicked humanity. Yes. All of us have sinned. All of us have sinned. But my Lord Jesus, when he came that day and, prevented, and, and presented the purification, I, I can put it this way, I'm being reverent. It's like him holding up his blood towards the Father. And I'm going to use my name. He says, and I'm going to use my name that I was called when I was a little boy because this is how I feel. I feel like he's saying, this is for all of Bobby's sins. This is to make it right. All his sins, my sacrifice, pays for everything. Let that, let that just, let that feel that. Every sin you ever have committed and will commit, he said, I already paid for when I presented the purification. That's why he said, don't touch me, Mary. Don't touch me. I have not yet presented the purification for sins. But once he did that, the Father, he then sat down at the right hand of the majesty of heaven. <laughs> Do you realize that the Father, this is, I'm going to come to the scripture, I'm getting ahead of myself, but but oh, wait till we come to it. So he became so much more superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. He is the Messiah. I had a Jewish lady tell me, I'm to come, I'm say, oh, Messiah. Means he's not Messiah, he's the Messiah. There is no other Messiah. The Jewish lady taught me that. He is the Christ, not a Christ. He is the yes. Christ. Amen. Yes. He has inherited a name that's above every name. He is the yes. Savior of the world. And so he inherited a name above any name that's ever been named. So when you say the name Jesus Christ, that is the highest name there is in the universe and beyond. Yeah. Amen. There is no other name. People swear with it. People curse with it. People say derivative. Of it. I can't even handle it when I hear people say words that are the first syllable of Jesus. What are you saying? Some are even believers, and they say that word. You never say the first syllable mm -hmm. of the name Jesus. To which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son? <laughs> Listen, this next word is so important. Today, I have become your father. Since the Spirit of God said, who will go for us? And Christ left. In, in Philippians chapter 2, it says, he, he emptied himself of all of his, his deity powers. Yeah. He emptied himself and left God. So God left God. God left God. To become a babe in a manger, he lived a sinless life, he died an atoning sacrifice, he descended, he raised, and this is when the Father looks at him, looks at his only begotten, there's no one else. It's the Spirit of God that hovered over a virgin, and Mary had never known a man, and she became pregnant by the Spirit of God hovering over her, life came into her womb, God became man. Man, he gave his life, mm -hmm. and this is where the Father sees the Son. He's ascended now. He's before the Father. He presents the blood, and the Father says, Today! The angels are going, Today, I become 
You're a father. Oh, do you feel this, folks? Oh, I tell you. He says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. And you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. This is the crowning of Christ by the Father. Don't touch me, Mary. I haven't yet got to my coronation. I don't have my crown yet. Don't touch me. I'm not finished yet, Mary. Don't touch me. Go tell the disciples. I'm ascending to the Father. And this is what was waiting in heaven, folks. This is what happened. Therefore, God, what is he referring to? God. Therefore, God, Jesus Christ. Therefore, God, your God, the Father, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. He went from, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, to Let me anoint you with the oil of gladness. Do you know that Jesus, I think, is smiling? He's not in heaven like, He's like, the oil of gladness. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Folks, smile. Just smile. Try it. Just give yourself a smile right now. Try it. There you go. Yeah. Now you're looking in the mirror of Christ because he's been anointed with oil and joy from that moment, folks, when he ascended. It went from the, it went from the agony and the pain and the torment to my son, today I've begotten you. The oil of joy. Oh, let us be like Jesus and carry that same anointing. You laid the law, you Lord laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. He's the same one who said, Let there be light, and the heavens are the work of your hands. This is the coronation of Christ. They will all perish, but you will remain. All the you know, all the planets, all the galaxies, as far as light years there are, it's all gonna collapse. God's gonna roll it up. They will wear it like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. Heaven and earth is going to pass away. But Jesus, the living word, will never pass away. Amen. The same spirit that's in us, we will never die because the spirit that's in us will never die. Thank you, Lord. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. Whoever is born of the spirit, they will never die. You will not perish, but you have ever Last week, life. I hope I don't have to go to your funeral. I'd like for the trumpet to blow and we'll all go together. But if any of you do go before me and I get to be at your funeral, I, I probably won't really weep hard, like, as though, because I'll know, oh, she is with Christ. Yes, amen. You're with the Lord. Now, I will weep only for the fact of missing you, but it won't be like, oh, it'll be like, to be absent from the body is present with the Lord. We live forever. To which of the angels did he say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? <laughs> Look how this world is now. Why they are killing Christians all over the globe. Mm -hmm. They're blowing them up in Sri Lanka. They're, they're beheading them in Africa. They're killing them all over the world. Mm -hmm. We go, Oh! In the last days, wickedness will increase. Many are going to suffer. Many will die for their faith. When a Christian is killed, they don't realize they release them to God. Amen. I'm not. I, I'm not condoning. Don't get me wrong. It's horrible. But for the one whose life is taken, they will be with the Lord instantly. I grieve for the families, for the sons, the daughters, the wives. It's horrific. It's horrific what's happening right now. It's awful. But part of me is comforted to know, Satan, you are going to be the footstool for my Lord Jesus. He will rest his feet on your kingdom. The angels, they are only ministering spirits sent what? To serve for the sake of those who inherit salvation, and that's you and me. There are angels right here now. You don't see them. There's angels here. Mm -hmm. They protect when you fall in an elevator and you hit your head on a guardrail. 
saying, no, she's living. <laughs>